Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Monday, October 19th, 2020. Thanks for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Today, October 19th, is Alaska Day. It's a holiday that's celebrated only in Alaska, as far as I know. Uh, today is the day that Alaska became a U.S. territory. So, uh, welcome to the Union, Alaska. Happy happy Welcome to the Union Day, Alaska, and we're really glad uh, that, that that snowy, snowy state is part of our a part of our union. Alaska is one of those places that I would love to visit someday. Uh, having an Alaskan cruise, something I, I would very much like to try. Um, tonight at 7 o'clock, we have an elder board meeting here at Arlington Reformed Church. It's our first in-person elder board meeting since the pandemic. We've been meeting by Zoom since then. And tonight we're gonna to be uh, starting to consider the budget. So that's a uh, budget for next year. So that's uh, something that we really need to be in person to do. So please pray for the elders as we uh, dig into this. It's not our favorite thing to do, but it is important. And we are the only ones who can do it. So uh, please pray for us as we, we crunch in on the numbers and start to, start to make plans for uh, 2021. Um, yesterday was very moved and very grateful for Rich Angle uh, coming to preach the word to us. Um, he was uh, blessing me and blessing all of us, I know. But uh, I was on a preaching retreat last week, which, uh, as you guys know, and thank you for praying for me, my preaching retreat was designed to give me the opportunity both to do some, some general study to refresh my soul and for me to uh, dig into the question of Advent and Christmas. Uh, preparing for the Advent services and Christmas services that we're going to have. Generally, I do that early, early in the year, but that did not happen this year. So uh, it was it's now for the October preaching retreat that I did it. Um, and thank you for your prayers. I, I, I came up with, a I think, a great ser uh, sermon series for uh, this Advent. But not only that, I also came up with another sermon series for next year's Advent. So I'm, I'm looking forward to both of them. Um, I had been in some ways dreading Advent because I did not have a plan and I didn't know what to do. Um, and now I'm looking forward to it. Advent's my favorite time of the year. So thank you for your prayers and thank you for that time to, to pray through that and think through that. Uh, but one of the things that really struck me yesterday, Rich, Rich did a fantastic job uh, preaching uh, and uh, his, his theme was on perseverance. And a few things that really hit me. One was intellectually, uh, I was intellectually engaged by the diff distinction that he made between steadfastness and perseverance. And he talked about how steadfastness seems to be sort of steady state, continuing doing what you're doing, faithfully uh, plugging ahead, keep on doing what you're doing, uh, the good stuff, right? That's steadfastness. And he talked about how in the Bible, uh, perseverance seems to be steadfastness, through trials, steadfastness through persecution, steadfastness through troubles. That perseverance is not just steady state steadfastness, but it's it's enduring through trials, it's endurance uh, through trials. So that's, that was a very interesting distinction to me. I never thought of it that way. And um, so thank you, Rich, for bringing that up. I, I was really engaged by it. My heart was also engaged when Rich challenged us to think about people that we know who have persevered. And I thought about many people, some in our, in our own congregation, many in my own life uh, personally. I, but what really gripped me was I, I thought about my friend, Mary Landers. Mary was a woman uh, who was part of our church in Rochester, New York, when I served prior to being here in Poughkeepsie. And uh, Mary had, uh, had had a stroke years and years ago um, and uh, had really been a model for me of perseverance through trials. And Mary passed away a couple of weeks ago. And as, as Rich challenged us to think about people in our lives who we know who have persevered, um, I thought of, again, a lot of different people. But when I thought of Mary, um, I just started to weep. And I, I realized that I have not really grieved Mary's death yet. And um, so it gave me a chance to grieve. I, I was sitting there with my mask on in church weeping. Um, and... Uh, just a, a, I'm grateful for that opportunity and to think about her example. I was thinking about how I, I don't know if she knew how much I admired her perseverance and how much her perseverance was a model for me. And uh, my hope and my prayer is that now that she's with the Lord, that she does know uh, just how much her perseverance affected me. 
So thank you, Mary. Love you. Uh, and of course, I'm a Bible nerd, right? So uh, uh, as Rich said on, on Sunday, that, uh, that um, steadfastness and perseverance, uh, steadfastness primarily appears in the Old Testament and perseverance primarily in the New Testament. Um, I had to go look that up, and he's right. He's right. He's telling the truth. Uh, but uh, it also gave me lots of things to think about and to talk about. So I want to talk about steadfastness and perseverance, continuing on Rich's theme this week. Um, the, the, the use of steadfastness that's the most important to me. Um, oh, let me just show you this. This is a, a cool. I, I, it's cool to me. We'll see if it's cool to you. <laughs> uh, you can see uh the use of steadfastness and perseverance in the bible when you do a search you know with a bible uh, program so here's a search from my bible program um this is uh occurrences of steadfastness or perseverance any any uh related words steadfast steadfastness steadfastly uh perseverance per uh, perseverant you know different 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 uh uses of those words in the English Standard Version of the Bible. And each of those red lines shows uh, the uses of, the, one, of the, one of the other of those words in the various different books of the Bible. Uh, I think you can see that there's a huge spike of the use of these words in the book of Psalms right there in the middle. And then, uh, of course, a huge spike uh, uh, about Psalm 121 or 122. There's a huge spike there of uses of steadfastness or perseverance. Um, I thought that was a fascinating chart. Right? It's, it's, uh, per thousand words, hits per thousand words is, the, is what that graph is. Um, why is steadfastness used so extensively in the Old Testament? Why is steadfastness used so extensively in the Old Testament? Um, there's, there's two words that are used two Hebrew words that are used for steadfastness in the Old Testament. And one of them is consistently translated steadfast love in the English Standard Version. Maybe in your version of the Bible, it might be translated loving kindness uh, or, the, 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 or the mercies of the Lord. Um, but whatever it's translated, the, the Hebrew word there is chesed. Uh, often, if you spell it in English, it would be H-E-S-E-D, chesed. You got to go to that at the beginning of it, chesed. And chesed, or steadfast love, is covenantal love. It's, it's the love that God has for us because of the covenant that he has made with us. Steadfast love is covenant-keeping love. And throughout the Old Testament, this is a, a consistent refrain talking about God, that God's approach towards us is an approach of steadfast love. Psalm 63, verse 3 says, Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. I love that the psalmist says that God's covenant-keeping love is better than life. Uh, it is more sure, more certain, better than life, God's covenant-keeping love. Psalm 66, 20 says, Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. God has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love for me. This steadfast love, this, this persistent love, this, this love that just keeps on going, keeps on going, keeps on going, that's reliable, that will always be there because God has made a covenant with us. And many of you know that one of the, one of the passages that has been so significant for me since my sabbatical is Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 through 24. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Boy, we, and Rich made it very clear yesterday that we are in, we're, uh, living through a remarkable time, a difficult time. And I really appreciate uh, the lengths at which Rich went to help us really to feel uh, the, the challenges of the times that we're in and how perseverance is necessary on our behalf, that we must 
persevere. But on what do we base that perseverance? How, how do we have that perseverance day by day? Lamentation says that what gives us the hope to keep persevering is the steadfast love of the Lord. Because we know that God is committed to us, that God has made a covenant to us with us, and that God will not violate his covenant. He'll never go back on his word. He keeps his promises. Because God keeps his promises, we can persevere. We can have hope that enables us to persevere uh, throughout uh, the challenges that we are, are facing ahead of us. Thank you, Rich, so much for that word. And we're going to keep talking about perseverance this week. It's a great topic, and I want to make sure that we really talk about it in depth this week. Um, and uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to enjoy your steadfast love. They are, your mercies are new every morning, and your faithfulness is great. And we thank you, Lord, for renewing your covenant, renewing your mercy towards us every single day. Lord, your, your chesed, your, your steadfast love, keeps on going. And that enables us to keep on going in spite of the challenges and the difficulties that we face. God, I pray for everybody within the sound of my voice who is experiencing challenges or difficulties, troubles, trials, tribulations, pains, suffering right now. God, I pray that they would know that your covenant with them is everlasting and that they can trust in you, they can rely on you, and therefore they can hope for the future. God, please help us to hang on and to persevere uh, and to not give up. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for tonight's elder board meeting. Please bless the elders as we persevere through doing the budget. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the, those who are giving to this church that enable us to make solid plans for the coming year. Please bless the elders for the service that they're performing on behalf of the church. And I pray that you bless our discussions tonight, that it would be fruitful. Lord, we love you and we trust you and we give ourselves to you. In Jesus' name. Well, thanks, New Beginnings, for joining me today for this daily update and devotional video, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.